Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you vehicle composition, vehicle inputs and routings. Vehicle compositions, inputs and routings act to determine what vehicle types are simulated, which means the composition, how many vehicles are simulated in the system, that means in the, the input of the vehicle, and where those vehicles go in the network, that means the routes of the vehicle. These three parameters are closely related to each other and should be considered together when developing a busy network. Let's see the vehicle composition. To, the, to find the vehicle composition, click on the traffic menu and in the vehicle composition, you can get the composition of vehicles. Vehicle compositions are assigned to each individual. Each individual vehicles as inputs and determine the relative flow of different vehicle types which enters the simulation. Each vehicle composition will have one or more vehicle types assigned to it along with the desired speed distribution and the relative flow for each type of vehicle. So here by default VSIM has its own default vehicle composition but for you you can define your own vehicle based on the field data for example if you have like a small car, if you have a passenger car, if you have like trailer, HTV, you can define all the categories here. Again, based on this category, for example, here we have like category M. In the category M, you can assign the types of car here and you can define the desired speed distribution for each vehicle. Again, the relative flow. The relative flow determines what portion of vehicle input volume should be simulated as each vehicle type included in a given vehicle composition? For example, if this vehicle category has three car and if I assign 0.25, that means 25 percentage. So that means in other words, 25 percentage of the vehicle input, this volume is associated with the vehicle composition of this one that means from this whole amount of vehicle the first one occupies about 25 percentage it doesn't mean that it's, it can't exceed 100 percentage but only it belongs to this category you can define for each category like this and you can define the speed for each of the vehicles okay the next part after composition is the vehicle input. For the vehicle input, you can get the vehicle input here. Click over here. Okay. We have the vehicle composition and the vehicle input. Okay. In the vehicle input, this determines the actual volume of vehicles entering the VZM network in the vehicle per hour. You have to know the field data. That means the actual or the field data of hourly volume of the network. So vehicle inputs are assigned to specific links within the VSIM network and the different flow rates can be set for specific time intervals related to the simulation period. So that means here we have for this network, we have entry, okay, based on the direction you have to assign the vehicles. So to assign the vehicles, just right click on this and add vehicle, okay. Actually, in this case, it's added. Let's see that again. Okay. Add the vehicle. So it's the waste bound entry. They say it's like 150 vehicle. You can assign based on the feed data. You can assign over here the vehicle input. Okay. Again, they say it's like 200. Okay. Let's assign on the other entry here the vehicle. Okay let's say this one is like 150 again for this vehicle entry the vehicle input is let's say 220 okay so we assign the vehicle input for each entry but here there is one important thing you have to know about the volume type here we have the score statistic and exact when you are assigning the score statistic that means the vehicle input simulators not the exact value. 
it's based on the random seed value. Here, you can get the random seed in the simulation button. Here, in the menu, you can click the parameter. In the parameter, you can see the random seed. Based on this random seed, if you are changing this random seed, the VSIM calculates the volume of the vehicle scholastically. Unless if you change to exact, that means it determines or it counts the exact number of the vehicle. Usually you can use this if you have the exact value of the hourly volume of the vehicle amount in your network. Okay, so this is how to assign the vehicle inputs on each entry. Okay, then you can define the routes. Actually, this provides several different route types. Here, you can click the vehicle routes. When you are clicking the vehicle route, you have a static, partial, and parking route. Most of the time, we can use the static and parking par partial route. The static means it is the major or the primary route, and the partial route is it acts as a secondary routing system in conjunction with the static routes. If the user wants to control the relative flow of vehicles where multiple paths are available, if there are multiple paths, you can assign the partial route in addition to the static route. So, in this case, we we can we can assign the vehicle route. Okay. You can assign the vehicle route. Let me show you how to assign the vehicle route. Okay. So click on the vehicle route and static route. Okay. Here, right click and add a new static routing decision. So this is the starting point. The vehicle starts from here and it goes to this direction. Again, the vehicle starts from here, they goes to this direction. The vehicle starts from this direction and they goes to this direction. So from this direction, the vehicles go to three directions. Wait, again, we have to define for this entry. In the same way, you have to define like this, okay, to three directions. Because in this scenario, we don't have U-turn. If there is a U-turn, you can assign also U-turn. So for this, like this, for this, for this part, okay. Again, for this entry also, you can assign like this to right, through movement, and left direction. Okay, so we assign the vehicles. So you can check the vehicle route here in the table. So in the table, we have vehicle routes, okay, in the westbound, in the southbound, and in the northbound. For each bound, there are three entries. So based on this, you can define or really adjust the destination link and the starting link also, the relative flow. You can adjust everything over here. This is how we can define the vehicle routes. Then after that, we have the vehicle route. By the way, we have the vehicle input, the vehicle route, and the vehicle composition. So we can see that how the vehicles are moving in our simulation. So let's start the simulation. So now the vehicles are entering to the roundabout. So this is how the vehicle works. This is all about how to define the vehicle composition, vehicle input, and vehicle routes. See you next time.